What up, what up, what up, everybody? This is Dario Hunt from Living Life Fearless, and we are back with another episode of The Fearless Show. Today's date is March 22nd, 2018. And with me, as always, is my co-host, Mr. Darius Walker. Say what up to everybody. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Fearless Show. It's your boy, artist Darius Walker. We've got our guest, as usual, Shannon, here with us. Say what's up, Shannon. Hi, guys. You've probably never seen my face before because it's always been really <laughs> crappy quality, but I have a mic and better lighting, so I'm here. I'm ready. She's not <laughs> yellow today, folks. I'm so. not yellow. <laughs> it's so exciting. <laughs> it's what I actually look like. So. And <laughs> joining us, our special guest today, tonight, is uh, Casey Tienen, Tynan. I hope I'm saying it right. Tynan? No, that's perfect. All yeah, right. Casey Tynan. That's me. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for joining us. Um, where are you out of, like, right now? Where do you live? I'm in Chico, California, right now. Oh, swag. Yeah, it's the Northern California nice. area. I know Chico because I went to school in the University of Nevada in Reno. So. Oh, no way. Yeah. I was just in Reno yesterday, actually. Oh, really? So that's fun. Yeah, <laughs> it's really fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great yeah. place. So I know it's. I know kind of the area, but not. I don't. I've never actually been in Chico. Yeah, it's a nice place. I love it. Lots of trees. <laughs> really bad allergies. Um, but yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> Hopefully, a little warmer than everywhere else, especially in New York right now. Yeah, yes. definitely. Oh yeah. Sometimes it gets too hot. They got though. mad snow. Like in the summers, <laughs> it's like 110, and like I can't deal with that. Like. I mean, New York's ugh. pretty gross in the summers. That's true. <laughs> yeah, hey. They just have I live sh- in New York. New York is You just have shitty weather like all year, basically. <laughs> <laughs> you can't win. Oh no. <laughs> the falls the falls not bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fall is the best time of year in my opinion. Special yeah. time. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we are here, you know, discuss your art. Shannon told us about you and we checked out your Instagram a little, you know, did a little research and everything. Um, so we're just going to just chop it up and just talk, basically. Cool. Sounds good to me. I'm going to lead off with my art guy, Mr. Dries Walker. I'm sure I know you had some stuff to <laughs> discuss. Word, yeah. You know, I mean, I'm an artist, so, you know, I, I could, like, ask you a thousand questions, you know, probably. Of yeah, <laughs> but, definitely. Um, there's, like... You know, but there's like probably some like like obvious things that uh popped out. Um, trying to think of like so you 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 um did you go to school for graphic design? Yes, I did. Yeah, so I graduated about a year ago with a graphic design degree. Um, yeah. <laughs> nice. And uh, so basically, like to follow up with that, I just wanted to ask you about like in terms of drawing. You know, because I'm a, like a drawer and stuff. Do you? Like, paper versus, like, you know, new school with, like, tablets and, like, digital, you know? Like, how do you like to work most of the time? Definitely more illustrative pen to paper. Um, I tried to do the Wacom tablet thing and, like, digital art, but it really wasn't as appealing to me as illustration was, just, like, by hand. Um, The traditional form, I guess. Um, Not to knock the other way in any way whatsoever, because both of them have their strengths. Um, But, yeah, I'm definitely more the traditional taking the traditional route which was kind of weird for my major um because they wanted more like ux ix design so like the design of design rather than like illustrations so i definitely kind of stood out in that regard um but i think it worked in my favor (laughs) at the end of the day so (laughs) nice yeah um well I mean, you're doing, like, all kinds of stuff, it seems like. Totally. Uh, it seems like you're a super creative person. So, <laughs> like I said, I could ask you so many different things. But, like, I saw, like, a couple standout things, like, um, doing, like, a lot of cover art, um, working with uh, musicians and stuff. Totally. Uh, that's got to be pretty cool, right? Oh, yeah. That's actually how I really got into, like, a professional um, career, I guess, in graphic design and illustration is starting to do stuff for my buddies and bands. Um because mm-hmm. music is, like, a huge part of my life. I don't play it. Wish I did. But um, just, like, going to shows yeah. and stuff, I'm really part of that culture and that scene means a lot to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, just having so many talented friends to be able to, like, create art around their work that's really, really good. I mean, it's yeah. the coolest thing. So I really enjoy doing stuff for bands. Yeah, it's fun. 
That's awesome. What's like the latest one? Like the last one you did? The last one that I did for a band? Yeah, it was a while ago. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of mostly just like stuff for my own company right now. Um, but the last thing for a band mm-hmm. was probably Sea in the Sky. They're my friends that are based out of uh, San Francisco. Um, and they're like a prog rock gem band. Um, and I made this like eel mm-hmm. t shirt design with like the spaceman in the middle of it. Um, so that was really fun. Oh. It was cool. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I was looking at some of your drawings and stuff, and like it definitely lends itself to, I think, the more musical like art artwork and stuff like that. Totally, the two are very they they're very cohesive. I guess that's a good way to put it. I mean, how would you yeah. describe your artwork to people? Yeah, that's a funny question. Um, an ethereal <laughs> mess. I mean, I don't know. I work a lot with just like a lot of like overlapping things <laughs> it's like really overwhelming to wrap your brain around sometimes um but i guess i i really like working with paradoxes and paradox so like combining beautiful themes with kind of dark scary themes um i've always mm-hmm. been really drawn towards drawing women um just that femininity mm-hmm. and that beauty i love it it's incredible it's powerful um and to be able to combine that with like nature and other animal scenes and stuff like that's what I really love. Um, yeah, there's a ton but... of different like animals and different animal type of creatures in there. Um, totally. I mean, when I saw it, I definitely thought like some like psychedelic like fantasy type <laughs> artwork or something like it. Kind of, <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's very accurate, but yeah, I don't really know how to define it honestly. Like that's a question I've been asking myself for a hot minute. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I mean, it looks great though. Like definitely Thank is you. visually you know, eye-catching and appealing. I appreciate that. It means a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, puppets. Yeah! (laughs) It's so great! Oh, my God. It's my favorite thing, seriously. Like, I thought I liked drawing, but no. Like, this is a million times more fun. (laughs) It's incredible. Um, yeah, like, ever since I was little, I would make stuff like that. So it's always been, like, a part of me, um, just making weird stuff out of felt. Mm-hmm. Like, all of those puppets that I made are made out of, like, felt and cotton balls. And, like, I just cut it all up and then hot glued it all together. So really janky, but, um, <laughs> yeah. Well, arts and crafty. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I love crafts. It's the best. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> so great. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I made all those puppets um for that scene i don't know if you saw it um it was like the stop motion video thing i I haven't posted the whole thing yet um but i'm definitely um really excited about that because it was so much fun to make um but it was for my website header that i'm going to be launching within the next month so it's just like this video of me in this forest that i Mm -hmm. made i have like paper mache and chicken wire and stuff as shannon would know from high school um our flow construction that's <laughs> yeah how i learned I how to do all I that even stuff think about that <laughs> so. you were always so good at that that totally makes sense <laughs> thank you um but yeah so that was really fun to like reintegrate myself into that form of art um because i don't know i just love making stuff so dabble in everything mm. yeah so i see you do like pop-up shops and um I like clothing stuff. Is that like your mm-hmm. company? Yes. High anxiety. High anxiety. <laughs> Same. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now the high part is that like. <laughs> I mean, you're you know, in Cali, so. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you are in California, so is this like the medicinal type of high we're speaking of, or are we speaking of like just the just normal generally, definition yeah, of high? <laughs> When I first started it, it was just, like, the general definition of high, um, because I've always been, like, a disgustingly anxious person, um, but, yeah, I just, I decided to choose that because I feel like it's kind of a relatable thing, I guess, because everybody has anxiety to a certain extent, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's definitely, yeah. And I feel like it definitely, yeah, seriously, um, (laughs) And it definitely ties into my artwork, too, because it's kind of, like, stressful looking at it because there's so many things going on at once. Like I said, um, I saw, like, the trippy, like, psychedelic nature of it, and then I saw the name High Anxiety, so I wasn't sure, like, you know, which <laughs> which manner we were speaking here, but... Exactly. It's really <laughs> funny. Um, 
hey, you know, why not both? Am I right? <laughs> Easy. It works. It's whatever you right. want it to be. Yes. Yeah, you can tell. Exactly. You know. Especially if you live in a <laughs> yeah, state where it's legal. Just, you know. Exactly. Amen to that, sister. That's what I like <laughs> to hear. <laughs> mm-hmm. But so, yeah, um, oh, you go first. No, go ahead, Sorry. continue. No, no, I'll stop going. Um, yeah, for the clothes, I screen print everything myself. So I built my own screen printing press, um, and it's all done in like my janky basement. Um, all handmade, hand cut. Like I put in way more effort than I probably should, <laughs> but um, it's so fun. It's really great. Yeah. So you taught yourself how to screen print shirts. Yes. Mm-hmm. Was that a difficult process? Because I mean, we make shirts, but we definitely don't screen print our own. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely kind of <laughs> a like a learning curve. I got really lucky with it because the worst part of it is exposing screens. That's like really tricky because mm-hmm. you have to put the emulsion on, which is light sensitive, and that has to be in a dark room. So I do it yeah. in my basement, and then I built this like really janky like forty halogen wall light like exposure unit thing. Um, yeah. And I burned my screens with that, and it luckily I got like the specs right off the bat, which was like six minutes of exposing a screen and then just like washing it out so the image comes through. So um, that was yeah. probably the biggest like the trickiest part the rest of it is just technique and like once you get it down it's not that hard mm. so, Doris, yeah. you got room in your apartment <laughs> <laughs> not yet bro as soon as i get a studio though i might yeah. need you to start like a studio yeah. that's a wrap seriously the studio is the biggest thing just space having space to make like i'm uh, in new york bro I'm, i live in the place with the least, <laughs> the amount, least of space amount of space in the seriously. united states facts bro like everybody lives on top of each other, bro. Yeah, I know. It. <laughs> I got the the price of a closet size studio is how much I'd pay for rent. Like in in a full house, like like a four bedroom house, <laughs> I'd pay rent for like with like three other roommates, we pay the same amount. Like for a tiny closet space here, That's I could awful. have a backyard and a garage with three friends. Like it's crazy. Yeah. So you're in New York, baby. So it's not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got you to gotta pay the price to grind out here, you know? It's, exactly. it's a different story. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, you know, we'll figure it out. Make some moves. Absolutely. It's the only way. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I mean, when I saw your art, I definitely was pictured like, I could picture it being in like an adult swim like music video or like commercial. That genuinely means the world to me cuz that's <laughs> actually what my next step is. <laughs> so <laughs> Oh, is it? Like I'm nice. I'm trying to make a TV show right now, so that's kind of my next big project other than the website. I have like a million things going on right now. I need to keep my brain occupied <laughs> at all times. Um <laughs> but yeah, like I I have a vision for a TV show and I'm going to pitch it cuz it's not that hard to get a show with them. Like there's so there's so many like just do uh, yourself oh we shows. trust me we know we grew up watching adult swim and <laughs> yeah. yeah it's the best like, <laughs> there are all types of shows that... some... eric andre show yeah oh my goodness yeah like the best oh my god incredible. for real no they put on a lot of people that <laughs> so you're definitely a fan of like that alternative uh oh yeah uh, like tv format and art and everything because I could, like totally. I said, when I saw it, I definitely pictured it being like an Adult Swim, like music video or commercial. Have they had like those trippy commercials late Absolutely. night and stuff like that? <laughs> yeah, mm. I'm super into that. That's like a main part of my personality. <laughs> okay, so really it makes weird, sense. So I, was, so I was right to think this. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I love that. Um, yeah, definitely trying to put my name in there. We'll see what happens. I don't know. <laughs> So you said you, you want it. So your goal, you want to have your own TV show. Yeah. So kind of my idea for it, I want to call it Garbage Club, and <laughs> it's gonna focus around a band every episode. So it's like a twenty-minute episode with a band playing, um, and kind of like just music videos, but like with a weird, wacky interview at the end, kind of like Eric Andre style. Um, it sounds a little vague because it is, and it's still in the developmental phase, um, but. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked about it. And just, like, creating weird puppet, like, stuff around them. Like, I have so many, like, very talented musician <laughs> friends. And it's, like, this would be a perfect platform to not only, like, boost my art, like, have other people be creative with me and also, like, boost yeah. a musical 
like platform as well. So just combining everything. So we'll see if I can make it happen. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's like a psychedelic Sesame Street or something, minus yeah, the learning exactly. and add the music part. Yeah, mm. like, I don't know if you guys have ever seen Wonder sweet. Shows, and it's like the most horrible TV show on the planet, <laughs> but not. it's kind of like <laughs> I'm not really hard to take it that far, but yeah, it's like puppets, and they're just like awful. Hmm. It's horrible. <laughs> they just do terrible things in real <laughs> life, like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's something, that's for sure. And have you seen Food Party? Yeah. That one's not on Adult Swim. I've so, heard of it, but I, I've never actually seen it. Yeah, you should definitely watch that because Tu Tran, the creator of that series, is like my woman. She's the best. <laughs> She's a genius. Um, and she did a similar, mm. is doing a similar thing where she makes puppets and then she has this like really weird TV show, like food show, like making all these weird, mm. disgusting food combinations <laughs> like with these puppets. Um, it's awesome. I love it. <laughs> okay. Food Party and Wonder, Wonder Shows in? <laughs> yeah. I want to recommend Wonder Shows in because <laughs> that, one, that one's a little bit too much. It's a little, yeah, that's something else. But <laughs> Food Party. All right. Yeah. Maybe Wait, I'll while check we're still it out. On, while we're still on the puppets, I was just talking to Dario and Doris about this before you came on, but I just found out about this web series, I guess it is. I It started in 2011, so I'm like super late to the party, but... It was called Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. Have you heard oh, of that? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's That's terrifying. That's like puppets at their so most scary. disturbing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. Like, ah, uh, their world is fragmenting. Like, it's really deep and scary. Like, that. that's something, like, out of a hellscape nightmare. But I like it. <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> Yeah, you don't it's usually really put disturbing. puppets and like MK Ultra. Those usually don't go together, but for exactly. some reason they do in that, and it's mm -hmm. horrifying. But yeah. I don't know. I saw it's it like last. I can't stop thinking about it. Like it invades my thoughts. At like <laughs> exactly the most. I'm like, oh my I god. Yeah, this I felt the same way. Like Ugh. it's it's so disturbing. But that's true art. <laughs> it makes you feel and think, which is really cool. So it's I so true. It. Mm -hmm. I told yeah. them they need to watch it too, so they can experience the, yeah, <laughs> unnerving nature Ugh. well i'm not sure i want to watch anything that's like invading my every thought but no you do no you do it's, yeah in the best know, way you shouldn't in the best way <laughs> okay yeah i don't know you like, told me big mouth and i'm not i wasn't feeling big mouth either so i'm not sure at this point <laughs> the recommendations it's it's an interesting show <laughs> it's funny <laughs> Yeah. Dario's just a hater, that don't worry. <laughs> cool. <laughs> For real, not, not at all. I just tell it how I see Dario it. Dario be hating sometimes. <laughs> just tell it how I see it. <laughs> just... Yep. Hater. So you say you're building a website. Um, yes. But right now, people can only find you through Instagram? Yes, unfortunately. I'm trying to build myself. Um, more of a presence on social media. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's a really important thing nowadays, especially as an artist. I'm sure you understand that completely. Um, Definitely. I'm not so sure if you want to go Facebook. People. What was that? I'm not sure if you want to go Facebook route now, but uh, I know. everything else would be. Seriously. Yeah, but Instagram makes you make a Facebook page if you want a business. Ah, this thing. is true. So, this is true. Yeah, they yeah. do. Yeah. Oh, really? Which is really I weird. I didn't know that. I just had mm -hmm. one already, so. Oh, that's weird. Well, that's because yeah, we were in before weird. Facebook bought Instagram. And... Uh, yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm not sure now if hmm. Facebook can. <laughs> What's that mean for Instagram? Is Instagram fucked up because Facebook's fucked up? Mm. I don't know. That's I a think... question. <laughs> that's a good question. Well, like, they didn't legally, mind people's info be... from Instagram. They don't mind it from Facebook. So I think Instagram's okay, right? I mean, there's not so much information on Instagram they're, you can find as long as you don't put shared, out crazy pictures of yourself. But. They're, they're shared contacts. All the That's contacts true. are shared. So everyone that you have, it tells you who's not following you or who's not on Instagram yet. So you can invite them to be on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Which is super weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, like, yo, like, this person <laughs> doesn't have this app yet. You should invite them. Like, how do you know they don't? <laughs> they know everything. <laughs> they know everything. Why you think oh, they're really? getting destroyed right now? I'm trying to get on this class action lawsuit, and so he set me up nicely. That's all. <laughs> oh man, classic. That's 
crazy though. <laughs> I don't know um, what to do. <laughs> I wanted to say. Uh, we were talking about Instagram and online presence and uh, mm-hmm. how it's important. Yeah, I mean, I totally understand what you what you what you mean by like trying to build because it sounds like now you're you're sort of like gearing towards um, like a specific a specific persona that you want like to present you know like like totally. a, a sort of brand you know and um once you have that going then it's like really easy to just you know keep the ball rolling on that cause, absolutely uh, you just you know you, you kind of like pick a style of like posting like posting style and then people get used to like the style you post and like they'll you know all that kind of stuff exactly yeah the branding but, part has been really weird because that's like your brand is your personality and it's like (laughs) you're branding your personality which is a trip like that's been like a crazy thing for me um yeah so just trying to be as genuine as possible with it because I know it's like I don't know like I hate hashtags I hate all that stuff like I think it's really (laughs) silly so like I use it jokingly but at the same time I know you need to do that stuff in order absolutely to make a name for yourself and like appeal to the I'm so mad about hashtags because like I know that if I don't put like 20 underneath it like it might not get it's not gonna get new eyes Mm -hmm. like if you want new people to possibly see it you have to use hashtags so that's that's the annoying part is 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 like that part of the networking absolutely it's really strange yeah and just like putting yourself out there constantly always being on top of it like i understand why companies have a person just for social media because it's a ton of effort like (laughs) yeah it's a oh yeah (laughs) it's a must nowadays to have a presence you know kind of everywhere and to be seen Mm as in this ever increasing crowd is more and more difficult and you gotta kind of stand out a little bit absolutely I I Casey, go, Casey yeah, never had a met. problem with that. <laughs> oh <my laughs> she still goodness. doesn't. It's Casey's just ha- I'm no, you... that's like the Casey's had her own brand had. since we were in like freshman year of high school, so it's nothing's oh, changed. No. She's just trying to market it to people now, and she's doing a great job. So she's you're like, like you know me, <laughs> do it. <laughs> like... well, tell tell us more. You know, tell us more. You can't just stop right there. Yeah, for real. I mean, I don't know. My whole like thing is just being as weird as possible because that's what I think is funny like I don't know like my my most recent thing for my website is like I just started nailing ham to my wall (laughs) and then like I hung my shirts up around it and it's this beautiful like mosaic of ham around (laughs) one of my shirts and then for the next one I did like asparagus and then another one do you know tiny hands like the little tiny hands (laughs) yeah I got... You guys don't know what tiny hands are? I don't know what tiny hands are. You've never seen... Okay, you gotta look it up right now because they're hilarious. They're super funny. It's just like little tiny hands. And if you put them in your sleeves, it looks like you have these hands that are like this big. Oh, you're talking about like the doll hands and... Oh, I think I've seen a clip of that. Kristen Wiig? I know what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. So I get a kick out of those. I think those are funny. But um, (laughs) I bought 20 of them. Those are pretty hilarious. (laughs) Oh, and then I nailed those to my Sounds wall like... and put little cigarettes in their fingers um, and then put a shirt in that. So, yeah, I don't know. That's just my, like, idea of, like, branding is just being, like, really weird because it catches people's attention, I guess. You know? It definitely does. <laughs> and I it's mean, funny. If... Like, it doesn't yeah. take itself seriously, which is my my thing, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> no, I like that. <clears throat> That's tight. Do you feel like you were going to have to keep, like, one-upping your weirdness, though? <clears throat> Absolutely. So we'll see what happens with that. Hopefully I don't just, like, implode within myself. Because, <laughs> <Like, laughs> you know, once you, do, once you do something weird, then it's like, okay, you can't go less. Now you have to, like, do more or at least stay at the exactly. same level, you know? Exactly. I mean, I think, I think I'll be able to do it, though. I, I think mean, puppets I really... is a good direction. I think yeah. that's getting totally. weirder, so. Yeah, I think exactly. there's just something instinctively weird about grown people with puppets, so I think that <laughs> is a great route for you. What did you yeah, say? I puppet think... butts? You wanted people to, that were oh, comfortable yeah. sticking their hands up puppet butts? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did say that. <laughs> and people were. It was great. I have them. They're looking at me right now. At least Ooh, show us the puppets. I want to see. <laughs> It's just the bird. One second. I'll be right back. Show and tell. 
if you will. So I decided to put, like, oh, this was funny. Um, so I made these, like, I made fake blood and intestines to, like, drip out of their mouths. Um, <laughs> and I, like, pieced them together with this uh, fishing line. So you just pull up on, oh, God. Oh, God. On these two. And then you hold that one. And then it flaps. <laughs> Um, so these are in the video the video for my web banner. Um, and yeah, they're really cute, right? Other than <laughs> the blood in their mouth, I guess. Um, but <laughs> when I was making these intestines, like I have these big ones that I was working with. The, my landlord had people over to like tour the house. And I was like, oh shit, like there's intestines everywhere. Like I need to hide these. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know where to do this. So like I put them in the backyard and... I hoped nobody would see them, but of course somebody goes through the side yard and is just like screams. It's like, oh my god! <laughs> and I was like, they're not real. Like, I promise it's fake. Like, I promise, it's not a weirdo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a little art. If you didn't want anyone to move in there, though, that'd be a good tactic, though. So. Oh yeah, Great tactic. absolutely. Yeah, just a psychopath. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> That's funny. <clears throat> I mean, I did see this. I think maybe my favorite piece was this Guy Fieri piece you have going on. Oh my god, that one's your favorite out of all of them. That's it's super one of my funny. favorites because anything with Guy Fieri <laughs> is just super hilarious to me for some reason. <laughs> totally, he's a he's really interesting. Like he's one of those people. It's like, why do you hate him? Like he's just I'm, a guy, but sure it's why. like you do, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Or at least, why is he funny? Like, I mean, obviously he's funny because of his hair and, like, his flame shirts or whatever. But, yeah, that was one of my coworkers' face that I photoshopped on. On Guy Fieri. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love Photoshop. It's so fun. Definitely another one of my passions. It's yeah. <laughs> Photoshop is fun. <laughs> it's the best. Love it. Oh, man. Yeah. Your Instagram tag's funny, too. Like... Okay, celebrity. <laughs> Funs, am I right? Guys? How'd you pick that? Yeah. How'd you come up with that? I don't know. Did somebody give you that, or did you figure that out? No, nah, I just oh. kind of thought of it because it used to be quesadilla, but everyone thought it was quesadilla, which I mean is equally as cool, I guess. But <laughs> I was like, I should probably do yeah. something that my name blends into. <laughs> That's a little, a little more <laughs> applicable to the populace. Um, yeah. But yeah, Casey Leverty. That's me. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Swag. Hopefully that'll come true Swag. one day. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Well, I mean, your designs on your shirts look pretty dope. Thank you. So. Yeah, they've been really successful. Mm. Like, I've been really humbled by it, honestly. Um, as you asked me before, um, I have been having a lot of pop-up shops in the area. I work at a coffee shop called Naked Lounge, um, and it's such a wonderful place like it's incredible and they allow me to do pop-up shops in the shop um and it's great on Saturdays when there's like a million people there and like people just come in and buy my stuff and it's great it's wonderful Mm -hmm. um and just like that's awesome the feedback people are giving me has been so awesome so it's great yeah that's great um do you know the name of your website will be when or do you know the date when you plan on having it up and launched yeah, absolutely. I'm having it um, down by the middle of April. Um, it's a Shopify account, so I'm still working okay. on the domain name and everything. But it's going to be highanxiety.co, hopefully. Um, that's not sign stone. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the plan thus far. I just need to take pictures of everything. Like, I have all the product ready. It's just, like, a matter of piecing it all together. So, yeah. Hmm. Which is a struggle <laughs> in itself. <laughs> so how's been the business side of things? Like, now... When you're branding, now you can't just think only about the art, but now you have to think about all the other stuff, like the actual business yeah. aspects of it. Yeah, I've honestly been struggling a lot in that regard because my brain does not think that way at all. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's it's a mess. I mean, it's it's good. I think it'll work. I have lots of friends that are really good with numbers and stuff, so they've been helping me out, which has been wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, if you like around my room, there's like a million <laughs> lists with like numbers and like things I need to do and everything. So it's really fun. Um, it's been definitely like training myself 
to think in a different way and to grow a part of myself that's necessary if I want to be successful in this. So, yeah, yeah, it's definitely weird, though, especially like being an artist and like having to put yourself in that Mm -hmm. domain, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's been interesting. I'm sure you guys understand that as well, like trying to start your business as well. (laughs) <laughs> yeah definitely yeah. um it's been a process for us uh, yeah you know you just want to create and do everything else but when you have all the business stuff you can't just do certain things all the time and it's just a balancing act and just figuring out you know okay oh, yeah. now i can just do this or what what can i do to do this and figuring out when stuff should come out when it shouldn't so like it's just it's a process but it's it's a good process you know you have to do it and i think learning how to do it yourself versus having somebody else do it, I think is a better process for sure. Totally. You have more control over everything and how you want it to work and operate and everything. So. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree completely. Do it yourself. It's the way to do it. (laughs) That's for sure. (laughs) Facts. I mean, you're the perfect example. You're over here screen printing your own shirts. Yeah, exactly. Um, Yeah, I'm just really controlling i think and that's why (laughs) like once again it would make a lot more sense to just have somebody else do it but i wanted to learn the skill and also i have some really good friends um who work at this place called silk shop and it's a screen printing studio so they graduated from the same school as me um and they've been really helpful Mm -hmm. with teaching me how to do everything so that's been like a great asset for me yeah it's called silk shop look them up if you need your (laughs) tees printed because they're wonderful um yeah they're great (laughs) So I see you just using like so many different mediums and so many different ways of like um, conveying your art, whether it's like stickers and shirts or like always like the puppets and everything. So when there's like new Mm -hmm. um, mediums coming up, do you like look into that stuff too? New mediums as far as like web stuff? Um, Yeah, I mean like now like there's a bunch of new technologies coming out. that we kind of been reading up on talking about was like there's some new there's like new AR capabilities where people can people are showing like art displays and and like uh, I don't know if you know AR is it's um, augmented reality so it's like through your phone but they're displaying the art in like a 3D space and you view it like in your phone like they're creating all these displays and there's like apps coming out for this like yeah, I have actually heard of that. I've never seen any, like, videos of it or any of it in person, but that would definitely be an mm-hmm. interesting thing to try and, like, dabble in. I mean, with me, like, I, I'm i not that great with, like, internet computer stuff mm-hmm. as much as I am with, like, physically making things. Um, I do know how to code, mm-hmm. but... And I enjoyed it. It's like a puzzle, but at the same time, like, it's not like what I'm trying to do, like, every day when I wake up. And I'm I'm not sure if that stuff requires a lot of coding or, like, I don't know, like, computer capabilities or something. Well, I would say there's this new app that they just talked about that just came out. It's called, like, Weird Type. Um, Mm -hmm. It's it's based on all text space, but you can put it in, like, 3D space. And you can set it up where, like, as you walk around, like, it displays differently and it's like it changes based on like your perspective and stuff like this. And it was like based off this program where this guy, um, what's his name? Like Zach Lieberman. He developed this thing where, uh, he can project, he could project, uh, like speech or like audio and like AR format. So like as he's talking and walking, the actual audio gets stretched out into this path. And then, like, as you walk along that path, it can play backwards or forwards or play, like, a sample here. Or if you walk into a di- different corner where you said something, it plays a different sample over here and stuff like this. That's so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it was really, like, kind of mind-blowing when you see the video and, like, it actually working in person. Like, it felt so far away, but, like, it's actually here now. Yeah. That's so mm. insane. Yeah, that's a trip. Like, it's so cool that <laughs> art is kind of moving in, like, a fully immersive like experience like that's incredible there's so many different ways you could go with that like yeah that's insane it's really really cool i definitely will check that out and look more into it sounds really neat yeah uh, weird type is the name 
I mean, Doris, I asked you the same question. Like, how would you, what do you think about like these new immersive ways of art and like interacting with art? And how would you think about using something like that? And if that could even help with what you do? Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. That's crazy. There's all kinds of stuff, you know, like, like you said, like that whole thing. I mean, there's just so many applications in terms of like, just using what's gonna be hot for a little while too because like that could be like something really creative in a new Mm -hmm. market might be very like it might do more well you know like just because it's the most creative thing you know made in that market so everyone wants to see the most creative thing like like the 3d viewing things there aren't that many like super creative uses of it um like there aren't like like they haven't shot a feature film in like 3d like like surround like scope or something where you can like like that would be crazy like once they do shit like that but (laughs) for art i don't know i'd have to be it'd have to be something really specific to my idea like like for me it'd probably have to like relate to the technology i was using or something like i would want to make it with that because it was like maybe i'm addressing the technology that we use to make art now or something like that i might do something like that i mean we did talk you know a few podcasts ago i don't remember exactly when it was about like interactive art exhibits now like uh what was it the color factory and all these other things that have been popping up recently i'm not sure um Mm -hmm. casey if you've heard about these Mm -mm. but um, i actually haven't i mean that sounds really cool though (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I actually think now I think about it, I'm, I think you might actually like because it's like a really physical. It's like kind of arts and crafty, but <laughs> it's like interactive. So when you're walking through it, it's supposed to be art, but you can like touch it and you can like mess around with all the stuff they have on display. And like, it's very much made for like Instagram type pictures. So like, totally. Like all, oh mm-hmm. yeah, like the ice cream factory. Is that yeah, what it's ice cream in factory San Francisco? And the color factory, Got it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that stuff is really cool. Actually, yeah, that would be really fun mm-hmm. to like be a part of and make. Yeah, just the physical art. That's really interesting. Yeah, because I've seen a lot of really cool pictures come out of those places, which is awesome. And it's like, it's art that can um, be repetitive in an effective way. You know, yeah. like everybody wants a cool picture with a cool thing, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it's really good for exposure as well. Mm-hmm. It's really awesome. That's like right. art begets, begets art, you know, like it's art, but it inspires other people to like make their own form of art. If you want to call totally. Instagram and pictures an art form. I mean, I've seen some pretty <laughs> impressive mm-hmm. aesthetics on people's Instagram. So, I mean, there totally. definitely are people that crazy. are more artsy than others, but yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really true. I mean, yeah, like, I'm all about getting people to be as creative as possible as you can be with each other, because creativity is totally, like, a domino effect. If one person's stoked on something, and you could show that and Mm -hmm. exude that to other people, people are going to hop on with you and want to do it with you and are inspired in their own ways, and it's just a chain reaction. It's really cool. I've been noticing that happening, like, in my life a lot recently, which has been so cool really inspirational and encouraging yeah and i just think like with this new generation how everything's more tactile and like technology based and i think when you can incorporate stuff like this into art that people will get more interested because they're always looking for something like that's not just the traditional like even of like my younger nieces or whatever like just seeing the picture or painting doesn't have the same effect for them totally. as it does like Our if they went changing. to like the cutlery <laughs> factory or stuff like that and like they could touch it and like or interact it in some way with mm-hmm. their phone or tablet and stuff like that like that would definitely engage them a lot more especially this new generation totally yeah yeah it's definitely true like and learning how to cater to that <laughs> and be effective with it keep people interested yeah that's a really scary difficult thing to do (laughs) i think it's getting even harder because you know there's so many just like so many tv shows so many movies so much you have your phone all the time you have like your computer there's so many like distractions now that 
it's mm-hmm. harder for people to just sit down and like appreciate like traditional type of like art and stuff like that absolutely it's all about mm. the one thing to the next um and the instant gratification the cycle is crazy yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty ridiculous yeah it's like yeah there's a weird crossover area basically because like a lot of stuff is like for art world like art world for art world people and like if you you know not for like everyone but for art critics and art students and you know all the all the academia and like the galleries it's for all those people and curators but like then everyone else that's not really involved in the art like world doesn't really get to see like, totally you know stuff they just they just kind of like they'll hear about it after the artists are dead and like exactly you know, it becomes a subject in like pop culture on like a tv show or something like they'll men- they'll keep mentioning it or something like that that's how like pop culture we did it so it's like it's weird for those kind of artists to try to cross over and do some other stuff um but i mean like i guess the closest person to that wow that's so weird do, do you know who paul mccarthy is not mccartney but mccarthy he's no i don't i mean i know mccarthy <laughs> <laughs> i know i was like i think everyone oh my knows. god <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know that. Well, if, <laughs> and what's hilarious, what's even more funny, though, if you look up Paul McCarthy's, like, art, it's hilarious. He made, like, an entire, like, theme park um, with, like, inflatable, like, dildos and stuff. Like, but they're giant, like, huge, like, this weird, like, <laughs> odd humor, like... <laughs> theme park it was it was a huge like but he's an artist dog so he make you guys have probably heard of jeff coons though yeah but, um, totally maybe. yeah so so jeff coons is the top he's a, he's like probably the most famous living artist aside from damien hurst maybe but isn't he the one who uh-huh. just appropriates people's art or am i thinking of something completely different <laughs> is that the guy or am i tripping um <laughs> no that's mr brainwash oh okay mr brainwash yeah I actually do know of him. Exit yeah. gift shop. <laughs> That's how I found out about. Yeah, him. exactly. Yeah, that movie's really cool. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so that guy. But but uh, ironically, Mr. Brainwash is influenced by Jeff Koons. Oh, okay. Like the, Jeff Koons is the guy who makes the giant balloon dog animals and stuff. Got it. Um. Yeah. So Mr. Brainwash copies him, and he basically makes a giant uh, Campbell soup spray can. So he takes. Andy Warhol yeah. and mixed it with you know he's, so like he just he like mixes literally his everything. artist he's, it's crazy yeah he's like oh I like that I'm gonna put that on my favorite artist over here's thing and like yeah <laughs> so Mr. Brainwash is is yeah yeah he's that but <laughs> Jeff Koons I don't really care for it that much either yeah but um basically if- Paul McCarthy would be like the next guy that's like as big as him that people don't talk about because of how like like I guess, uh, I don't know, adult his content is. Totally. But, like, cause, yeah, because he has this weird, like, he had, like, a weird, like, um, like, a blow-up doll thing that was, like, almost like a jumpy castle that you could walk into. <laughs> and then, like, the exit was, like, coming out of a womb. So, like, there were videos of people That's looking hilarious. like they were getting birthed out of this <laughs> I fucking... Love that giant no real That's talk really so like funny. in this this guy made this stuff so like but he's an artist and so it's it's crazy that he like he has i don't know he's playing in some weird territory but i don't know <laughs> There's all kinds yeah, i'm not of sure stuff. i'm going to art exhibit that's full of inflatable dicks but i appreciate it. <laughs> i've the never seen it in person but, uh... i'm not going to a palm Mac- <laughs> well actually i would probably have to go just to see what like, just to say you just went, see. you know? That should, you're, in the art, yeah. you're in the art world, though. I'm not it's sure I want to take a picture next pictures to a giant inflatable not, dildo. That's sure like I a dream come true. I mean, yeah, it's it's just, it's craziness. It's like, okay. I mean, but that's what it is, though. I mean, that's kind of my <laughs> point, though. Alex I think that, symbol. like, nowadays... So, he's kind of, like, making a real critique, you know? It's like, oh, all, all these giant statues are just huge phallic symbols you know so he's almost like he could, he could spin it with the right language to make it sound like some real shit you know? exactly <laughs> but really it's just a giant like red like fucking cock like a dildo that everyone knows is a dildo and like it's just like a huge joke <laughs> yeah. Made yeah. that's my favorite thing 
I mean, but that was like kind of my point. You I think actually like, really enjoy his work. You should check it out. Yeah, it's I, really, I definitely will. That was like kind of my point. That like I think this current generation needs like artists to make their exhibits like an experience now instead of just totally. going mm. to see it because otherwise. I know some like little shit shithead kids that just be like, oh, I'll just I'll just Google the painting or picture or whatever. Yeah, like exactly. I don't need to go. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's definitely <clears throat> right. different being able to have this interactive experience than just looking at something. It's so true. Yeah, and that's why I like honestly yeah. I decided like I like working with tangible objects because people are more interested in them. At least I found like I tried selling stickers, I tried selling prints, but it definitely wasn't as effective as something that people could actually wear have and like yeah. be a mm-hmm. part of i guess it's interesting <laughs> right yeah i mean when it comes to people respecting art though like i don't know if you heard about h&m you and Reese and shannon mm-hmm. what they were trying yeah. to do no um, i haven't heard about it they mm-hmm. were trying to sue a graphic artist uh, a graffiti artist because he sued them oh. for using his work without like getting any it clear. Yeah, like they didn't ask him to use his work or anything. They didn't pay him or anything or any of his rights. Yeah. So, but they're trying to sue and say that like any art, any graffiti that's put up illegally, like on mm-hmm. property, is basically fair use, and that they don't have to. Interesting. Uh, they don't have to ask for the artist's rights to use it and stuff like this. Wow. Yeah, that's definitely uh, an interesting argument. I mean, I don't agree with that at all. <laughs> but, I, mean, I mean, basically, they're trying to steal the graffiti outfit. artwork and use yeah. on their clothing and advertising for free. Yeah, it's so crazy. Mm-hmm. I know Urban Outfitters is doing the same thing with Etsy artists and stuff. It's like a phenomenon. Uh, it's ridiculous. Yeah, and it's scary because like, well, what were you going to That's think? crazy. Yeah, off top, I know it. Honestly... That honestly, the H and M thing, I don't think that's gonna work. Cause personally, just like with music videos, people's videos get taken down, and like they have to shut shit down just because of that same thing, graffiti in the background that they didn't clear. Like so, like if that's a music video thing, then like H and M's definitely probably gonna be countersued, or like the the numbers gonna go up, or they're just gonna settle. Cause they're not gonna they're they're not gonna win that case, but I don't know about the other one. I don't know too much about uh, the Etsy thing. But what H and M is trying to say is because so they're trying to say because the artwork is illegal and that it was basically vandalism that they don't. That's like they're trying to take it. To, they were trying to take it to courts to argue this. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. basically, if the court well, if the court to were to side with them, basically that would make all like non sanctioned graffiti. Up for, <clears throat> grabs up for grabs by these yeah. corporations, basically. Yeah, basically. So basic. Well, see, that's. <laughs> I don't know. That's interesting. That's really interesting. That goes back to the whole like, what is art debate? I mean, even as an English major, like we had that conversation. Like it seemed like every single class almost because it's such a integral question for so many different, you know areas of study and you know fields that people go into i mean it affects so many people and jobs Mm -hmm. and everything so i mean i think graffiti is art but i mean i can see where they're coming from but it seems kind of it seems kind of counterintuitive like okay it's illegal like should you be trying to appropriate illegal art if that's your argument i don't know that seems kind of backwards well that's what they're trying to say and if they do that that opens up the doors because like if you think about somebody like banks yeah so you could just use any 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 of those artists everyone can use it for free then because he's not you know like everyone can basically make profit off of whoever the most famous street artist is that's like not doing it not doing murals if they're not doing murals like then like it's it's probably not being paid for like they're not so i don't know that's crazy yeah uh, that, honestly i don't i don't see how that's possible that it would actually um go in their favor i i just see a settlement but that's probably because one side doesn't want to i mean i was reading that they were talking about dropping their uh lawsuit because they've been getting so much backlash over it uh 
H and M is about to fucking file for bankruptcy, man. <laughs> and oh, so they're just reaching right their now. Their shit is over. They've just yeah. really been they're, fucking up their lately. Their shit is over with. <laughs> like bad. You don't. You don't. You don't take hits like this and then go at an artist publicly. Like you're basically shitting on yourself. Yeah, it was like, a bad <laughs> PR look, and like they've. They've been fucking up really badly, <laughs> like basically. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> At the end of the day, I don't understand. <laughs> They've definitely just been fucking up. <laughs> I, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen something like this bad of like a just like fucking yourself over since like John McCain brought like Sarah Palin on as VP. Like, like he was almost a sure win. But they make such cheap part. clothing that. It's hard, bro. I can't believe it. it's hard. Oh, it is hard. It's really hard. Honestly, get like $10 I was surprised. I was like, "Oh my god, mm-hmm. yeah." But I mean, five dollars t-shirts. Honestly, <laughs> seriously, seriously. It, nobody shops at H and M and buys full price t-shirts. Like, <laughs> I mean, definitely appropriate. Love their designs uh, in one way or another, for sure. Who's checking for H and M's fresh off the like you know their new season stuff? Like <laughs> you check clearance only. You only buy on sale. Like yeah. But I mean, not not H&M you. Stuff. You were talking about the music video stuff that made me remember uh, Kendrick Lamar actually is getting sued for. Uh, ripping off an artist. And I don't know about ripping off artists, but basically using her. Man, artwork. so here's the thing about that. Actually, so this is the whole. This is the opposite side of things because there's a lot of that going on right now too. There's certain art, like there's a whole bunch of stuff that's um, I don't know. It's just weird because like gold and black, in like. Afro like you know Egyptian and Afro centric symbolism and stuff mm-hmm. is like it's kind of an easy design element. So there's different artists who do it very particularly, and then sometimes they look exactly. So it's almost like it looks like a copy. Well, her name was, but then there's l- subtle differences. Her name was Lin- Lena Iris Victor. Yeah. But here's the thing with his is that she said that they actually contacted her before they even shot the video to use her artwork which looks exactly the same as in the video for the video mm-hmm. and then she said no right but they then they it. put it out uh-huh. there anyways yeah oh man right yeah that's not cool well, <laughs> the only way the only way kendrick can lose this is depending on the language they used when they approached her in the first place i mean if you compare the it's two all about, though, like, it's all about it's, the initial it's definitely like they definitely saw her stuff and were like before right but at the same time they don't have to that like if it's not classified it might not be classified the same just because it's a it's not 100 percent the same like i looked at it and they're not exact so yeah they changed they changed a few shapes here and there (laughs) yeah and somebody else did it and like it's a commission so essentially it's it's a singular thing that i guess is reproduced in, in in a way that I don't know. It's 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 two or three degrees separate. So are you an artist siding against work? an artist right now? <laughs> I'm just talking about creative comments. <laughs> I'm just saying. It sounds like you are like artists. I mean, how many people remade the Mona Lisa or like go to go to the Met or go to a museum and 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 paint the paintings? You know, like I'm not saying. You know, like everybody copies everybody. But, but I don't think they. The same time. The idea. So that's a thing. Yeah, at the same time, I'd be hurt. I guess. I mean, it's good for her. If 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 it was like, it's pretty obvious. I mean, if I get hit up and then I like see the shit, yeah, like yeah. so, if somebody hits me up about like some cardboard artwork about like a specific person, and then I say no, and I see a charcoal drawing on cardboard of that specific person, I'm probably yeah, gonna so like, be hurt. you know, be like, okay. And then if an artist uh, came out and said, "Well, it wasn't the exact same," you would feel some type of way. That's all I'm saying. I would you, be you pissed. <laughs> I would be so mad. See, but the thing is, if they didn't, if they didn't do it exactly the same, but they, they, for they me, have it's, caused, for they, me, it's I'd not be the pissed. same because they They'd asked her shady, before. They asked her before. But would I win? I'm just saying, would I win? I'm just saying, would they I win? couldn't even? Yes, yes. They, she's they right. Couldn't even, she's they right couldn't, to be look, mad. They couldn't even act win. like they didn't see it before because they already <laughs> asked her, so they can't be like, oh, I didn't see it. 
Or, oh, I didn't. It was just an accident. Like, you can't even do that anymore because they already asked What's her. What's worse, them asking and her saying no and them doing it anyway or them not asking at all? Well, what's, what, what if their asking. explanation is, I want something. Because she said no and then they were like, the oh, well, fuck it, I'm going to do it this. <laughs> Like, what if the creative director describes something and then somebody's like, oh, I know an artist who makes work just like that. So what if they had the idea initially already, some sketched out, and then someone's like, oh, this reminds me of. So what if they already had the idea and they just went with the initial thing? Oh, because she can't do it? All right, well, I already had the idea, so we're going to run with it. <laughs> it's a fine line. Yeah. What I if they had the idea that. before they even knew about the artist? And people, people, and then people. they reached out to the people, artist. This is an artist speaking right now, and he it's is so literally funny. citing against the artist advocate, right yeah, now. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I got to. Just so the artists don't get it twisted. Because you know how many <laughs> artists shit gets stolen every day? You know how many major companies, including H and M, like these, they jack all the time for sure. Shit. So then, so you're basically saying is artists have no rights? No. I mean, oh, <laughs> how are we gonna play it though? How are we gonna play so it? So if though? I take, so if I take your art and I just twist it a little so bit, I change it artist, a little bit. Dario, let me ask you. But a question. I do it by hand, but if I change it a little bit. Paints a picture of a mad? portrait. If a painter finds a picture of Beyonce online, it's not their photograph, but they paint the picture, Come right? On, That's someone else's property. <laughs> you know property. it's a different, different medium. That, um, no, it's not. That's the same thing. I like that picture, but I made it different. I'm saying <laughs> you're, you're taking it in the context. I'm trying to say there's degrees. If we're talking about a business structure, then it's a different story than like if is it wrong or is it not wrong. Yeah, he stole it. They reached out. So they stole it. It's fucked up. But, you know, I don't think, I don't, honestly, I don't think she'll win the case, though. She pro- she probably will get paid, though. So that's a win. She probably will get paid. But, I don't know. Maybe they'll put it in the credits. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, everybody, Darice's artwork is up for, for, <laughs> for free interpretation. <laughs> Anything you like. <laughs> I mean, Anything you like of his, just just change it a little bit. <laughs> Come on, Doug. Isn't that what everyone does? <laughs> Logos. I mean, come on. So, as an artist, what are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to just be like, uh, well, fuck. All it. artists should know nothing is original. That's true. I didn't. I didn't invent. You know, we didn't invent the podcast. You know, you didn't invent <laughs> finger puppets, but they're all going to be different. For <laughs> so, sure, I, no, for sure, I, I didn't invent the podcast. I didn't, like, invent stuff on the, I didn't invent the stuff on the website. But if you take my stuff, I'm going to sue you, and it's just that simple. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm not it's an artist, for, so I don't work in that like world where. When I when I'm I design something, how for hard it is to prove that stone, something you can't stolen from you as an artist. Coming from an artist, so, bruh, you I have art online. Like you know that Trayvon picture went viral. You know how many outlets get clicks? They use the picture of my art to click on it, and then the picture's not there, and it's just information. For sure, these people. This is online. Niggas making money off of me right now. I know what it is. I'm trying to tell you right now. It's not easy to just be like, oh, they're stealing my shit. They're using my shit. I need to get bread for it. But if they used it in a movie or in a music video, I think it's a little different than if they used it to promote an article link. Yeah, but that's small scale, large scale. I mean, as a writer, it's Um, a bit different. Like, for me, thinking about this whole debate i mean it's a lot easier to as a writer to say you plagiarized my exact words like and sue someone for it but with art it's so there's so much room for interpretation that it's basically impossible totally right yeah it's just hard to point fingers when it's when you talk about art it's just really hard i just feel like this one is pretty straightforward when you ask somebody beforehand Exactly. It sounds and then, like two weeks later, it comes <laughs> out I, and it's like they're just like, what the fuck? before you say, if there's more things before we reached out to that artist, then it's more complicated. We're starting with that part, so like it might not be as simple as we make it sound. That's all I'm saying. This art shit is really complicated. It is. It's annoying. So everything you create is just I a mean, collection. If of I look things. at it for face value, they need to pay her. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how much money you get paid from a music video, but you know, whatever. I mean, enough, I guess. You, I, guess you, I guess YouTube. It comes yeah. from you can get YouTube. You can get it. 
Yeah, but that's that's after the fact. There's a there's a difference between the music video budget, which the artist would be cut, uh, uh, you know, either one lump sum from the budget, or if she's writing in a contract that it comes from back end. So those are that's how like so it's not just the, like one way or the other. It's what they would have negotiated. So that's why I said when they approached her, that information. Is really well, important. she's suing them because they're saying she they used it to promote the soundtrack. So she's trying to get all that soundtrack money too. <laughs> I mean, well, <laughs> if they didn't pay up front, then I might as well get it on the back end. Let me see what that back end I mean, looks like. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what happens when you. Do fuck up and you do steal so much shit. Is they actually if they do win? Yeah, they're getting they, all that. They, plus, can, they get that plus. right. Absolutely. Like okay, sometimes it's a hundred percent. Like in music, if you don't clear a sample, sometimes they can take a hundred percent. Like oh, well, um, did you not just hear about Marvin Gaye? Take it down. It, Marvin Gaye's estate sued uh, Robin Thicke for blurred lines. Really. Oh, word? No, I didn't hear about yeah, that. Yeah, so he sued him because he's saying the style, like, first of all, Blurred Lines and the song that they were saying are similar, like, aren't even the same song or, like, the same melody or anything, but they're saying it's the right. same style. They copied, like, the style of the song. What? And he actually, wow. and they actually won wow. this lawsuit. So now they get 50% wow. of, like, all the royalties from, from Blurred Lines. Okay, I don't like oh! Robin Thicke, but that doesn't really make any sense. Like, it made no yeah. sense. Haven't you seen, like, 10-second oh songs or whatever that guy is on YouTube that sings all the, you know, different styles? Like, that's literally what people do is they copy each other. And I that's... But the... with music, for me, I don't think you can sue somebody for a style. You can't have a copyright exactly. on a style. That's ridiculous. No, that's impossible. That's silly. That's what I'm saying. There's only so many for styles, real. like... Like, like, how could we have a genre if we can't, like, have a style? Like, if we can't do a similar style, basically, then, like, how are their genres? Yeah. So everybody to... just needs to pay whoever started the genre. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, whoever was the first one. <laughs> it's good if you're the first one, but... Oh, man. Yeah. That's crazy, though. I mean, it went all the way to the, like, like this Court art, of Appeals, so... Creative, creative stuff is complicated. <laughs> The lines are blurred, am I right? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's blurred lines. I mean, Robert Thicke, though, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. For me, he that was just a crazy one because never... it wasn't like he <laughs> took the beat or the melody or sampled it. Yeah, it's just, that's silly. That's crazy. It's really ridiculous. So. But... What are you gonna do? Yeah, that's just weird because it wasn't like an obvious thing. So. so basically, what I'm saying is, I love art, but I'm so glad I'm not in art. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crazy place. It's to not be. the easiest thing because it's not just like consumerism and like capitalism. It's this whole other uh, intellectual property based thing that is like nobody really gives you all the rules for. You just like, <laughs> and it always changes. It's just like ah, I don't know. It's just like. Yeah, I mean, if I'm rubbing thick and I'm losing 50% of all my royalties now, I'd be real mad. <laughs> all of a sudden? I'd be mad. And it's not even Marvin Gaye, because obviously Marvin Gaye has passed away. It's like Marvin Gaye's like right. relatives and like estate holders now. Mm -hmm. They're just so grasping wild. for straws. Yeah, and they and they and got they a got big it, one. So. And they got a yeah. real big one. Because they still play Blurred Line on like commercials and everything and... Yeah. That's mm. insane. Really wild. Insane. Yeah, he got in all kinds of trouble for that, so it never stops, apparently. <laughs> yeah. It is just interesting, though, because how is that okay? I've noticed that with a lot of hip-hop, a lot of their influence comes from old jazz songs, like Dorothy Ashby and mm -hmm. other jazz artists, and like, how is it okay for them to use those beats and tunes in their music well, and have that be well hip hop is a little different because hip hop was built <laughs> on sampling and when they put out like these official songs they do get the rights like they have to contact yeah. the people before to use the samples so there's like a lot of songs that never come out because certain people won't ever release their samples right. but if you hear like a yeah, if it's obvious being sold, sample in a song for hip hop it's they've and they're like 
selling it, they already asked the people to use it. But hip hop discovered a loophole that if you use someone else's mute like beat um or verses but you don't sell it then you can still use it for promotion yeah. got it i mean so like if so, it's a mixtape they can like <laughs> put it on their mixtape but they can't put it on their album totally yeah but if it becomes a big single and then they start like trying to sell it then they get hit with like a lawsuit for sure absolutely yeah yeah, it's just a weird this copyright stuff and like with art <laughs> it and makes my brain in general is, trip, is insane crazy. yeah well because what's crazy is like if you imagine like uh like say they're inspired by some like jamaican artists and stuff they like have to find people connected to them like if it's from the 60s they yeah. they still have to clear it with like Whoever whatever has the right, like owns the rights to generation yeah. of their label is from then and shit. Like they have to find those people and still get that cleared from like these far off places. Like even if it's foreign, I'm sampling something from India. Like you gotta figure out <laughs> gotta make it work. how to get it cleared. Like it's crazy. So like a lot of times that's like a big thing. Like so people just try not to sample, but that's the whole thing with like this whole style thing. Cause like. I don't even understand. Like, if I get if I get a whole band in here and we record all the instruments individually, like, and it sounds different, but it's similar. You're like, I'm, I'm, I have to pay you like half my royalties now. Like, I mean, I don't personally, know. I, I don't think know. this this is a case. I think that might go farther than it did because it might go to like the Supreme Court because when you like make a ruling that you can copyright a musical style, like that's gonna change everything. Totally. So, just interesting. Oh. Art is just a whole <laughs> different thing. Like, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> especially with that stuff, sometimes it's more just pride than anything. Because um, I have a friend who's an artist, and he's in full support of, like, he's a musician and an artist, and he would be okay with anybody taking his songs and, like, claiming that oh, yeah. as, as their own and stuff. And it's like, how can you be okay with that? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's weird. Like, it's definitely, like, an ego thing to a certain extent um, of just wanting recognition where recognition is due. But <clears throat> imagining, like, just letting go of all of that, how crazy that would be. I don't know. I mean, I initially, it probably, you're probably a little happy that people are wanting to use yourself. But then I think when you start like making millions of dollars off of like something you did yeah i don't think you'll be like okay with people so just like, about it <laughs> yeah it's a little it's a little different when you start like putting real like figures behind mm -hmm. yeah because totally. blurred lines Definitely. for sure has made him like tens of millions <laughs> of dollars for sure like easily yeah absolutely yeah so then when you start saying oh yeah we're taking half of that i think that's when you start feeling like, all right, what the fuck? <laughs> Why? He's probably going to have to drop another album soon then so he can get some more residuals flowing in. Now that it's getting cut, sh now, that, now that some of it's getting cut, one of his, uh, you know, <laughs> main bags is getting depleted. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, you can live off of one song for, like, a really long time. A long time. Yeah. What do you think, like... A lot of these people, they, they get like one like, or like two T-Pain hits makes so much money still. Royalties and commercials and movies and, yeah. For real. Like, Tupac is making money, so much money right now still. Like, his music's still in soundtracks. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, it's crazy. So, like, all those estates are, like, getting richer. I mean, Prince's you know, estate like, was, like, over a billion dollars. Uh, yeah, that's so fucked. Like, right, he died right after he got it. Like, two years after he bought all his masters back. And he didn't have a will so, now, so, like, there's a whole thing with that. Yeah. It's just... So, there's a whole mystery about this stuff. I don't even want to talk <laughs> yeah, about that. That's, that's like a whole other... Going down the rabbit hole. That's a whole other rabbit hole. That's a whole other oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I mean, we'll just start to wrap this up. But, um... So with your art, like, only thing, question I want to ask, like, do you have, like, any influences specifically, like, TV show-wise or pop culture-wise? Absolutely. Um, 
like I said before, to Tran, the creator of Food Party, she's a huge inspiration for me. She's incredible. Um, her brain is so weird and it's so cool. <laughs> like, it's great. <laughs> um, when growing up and really starting to find myself as an artist, I was really into the work of Alex Party. Um, he's really into working with like heavy line work um, and monsters and also like adding like really crazy colors as like a juxtaposition. It's really sick. He's incredible. Like he's been a really popular artist for a hot minute. Um, Alex Party. Okay. I've seen him. Yeah, I know who you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, he's great. Him and Skinner. Skinner is kind of similar. I mean, completely different artists, obviously. Oh, yeah. But Skinner is a graffiti artist. I think that's how he started. Oh, maybe that's not right. But um, he's incredible. Um, I also really like this woman named Allison Shulnick. I just found her recently, actually. Um, and she works with Claymation and um, is a painter. And so mm. incredible. She made this one video called Eager, and it is one of my favorite things I've ever seen. It's so great. Um, she just molded these beautiful, like, long figures into this, like, dance sequence and then, like, creates, like, four scenes with the clay and these, like, crazy, creepy, like, flower things that are, like, eating themselves and stuff. It's really neat. I highly recommend it. Um, hmm. It's definitely one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Um, other than that, um, TV shows, like I said already, off the air, Eric Andre show, um, <laughs> Wonder Shows in, um, <laughs> just all that weird stuff. I'm super into it. Aqua Teen Hunger Forces. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> that was my show. That was my show Absolutely. in high school. <laughs> yeah. And that less of an was... inspiration thing, but Rick and Morty, obviously, is an incredible Yes. Thing, so. Of course, Rick and Morty. <laughs> yeah. So great. Therese hasn't seen it yet, but what? Uh, Therese, no, no. Wow. I'm sleeping, out. I'm sleeping. I don't know. <laughs> you have a long time to catch months. up. Oh. Don't worry. So. Yeah, I've been telling him months. <laughs> it's wonderful. You did. I still. It's just not on the platforms I use. I gotta like actually. I have to try to watch it, so it's not like Netflix easy. I mean, I don't know. If Adult Swim <laughs> used to have all their shows for free. I don't know if yeah. they still do that, but they have I think it's. I know. I used to watch on their website. Do they do that still? Yeah, not on the website. Do. That's interesting. Do they? On the yeah, website? it's select episodes. I'm pretty sure Rick and Morty episodes. is on Hulu. That's all good. I can find it. Yeah. I can find it. <laughs> like it's, it's not, you know, it's not that hard. I, I, can, I can get the it's links. So I can get the links. Like I'm saying, I just have to, I just have to pull it up. Like I just, but you just need to go. So many get things out to binge watch. Though <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna get up on Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty's what ten episodes to, each season, I, so it's really not that much. Yeah, I think there's three or four. I mean, everything. Three all seasons. the snippets sound dope. Yeah. I wish there was four. <laughs> the fourth season might Same. come in 2020. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So insane. I love our show. Really funny. So one last question. Yeah. Do you know M. Night Shyamalan movies? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, why? <laughs> Not this again. <laughs> why are you asking this? One question. So, uh. Signs or The Village? Signs or The Village? I'm going to have to go. Well, Okay. Honestly, I know Signs is probably the better movie, but growing up, I watched The Village a lot, so I'm going to have to oh go with The gosh. Village. Oh, no. <laughs> oh! Is that bad? It's just because I've only seen Signs, like, once, and honestly, I couldn't even watch it because I watched it when I was really little, and I'm terrified of aliens. It's, like, one of my biggest fears, and, like, I saw the alien the figure, and it freaked me the fuck out. I was like, I can't watch this, so it's just because I haven't seen it, but I will admit it's probably the better movie. <laughs> yes, that's a point. I'm so taking that. Win. I'm taking that win. Yeah, you both win. You can't take that. Take win. that win. That's what I said about it. That's my argument. Except for the fact she said exactly. What I, I wasn't said. asking you any questions the about these movies, so I don't I even know why you're giving an answer. When the aliens right now. came out, as soon as I, I really saw don't know why you're giving your answer. I, said, I don't want to hear. It. Nobody. <laughs> so <wants> like, you <laughs> already heard your explanation. As soon as I saw the aliens. I didn't even say it. She just basically play by played you what I said, except her reason was different, but she still arrived at the same conclusion of the village. So I win that one. You don't. I'm sorry. Nah. Oh, no. Nah. Not going with that one. Oh, no. You're fine. This is just a running joke me and him have about these two really? movies. So, yeah. He likes garbage yeah. movies. That's Dr. all. Dr. Rector is ridiculous. He's a 
two and a half. That's for sure. I did see Split for the first <laughs> yeah. time like this week, so that was <gasps> oh, different. <laughs> I was gonna say I pick Split. I don't pick either of the ones you oh, said. Split yeah, wins. I actually agree with that. That movie is fucking great. Well, well, first of all, oh, we're not talking about his again. best movie because we're talking about the best movie. We're not talking about his it's good movie. Easily movies. six. We're sense, not talking about. But his... we're just talking about these two specifically. Well, Split's still better. Yeah. <laughs> Regardless. <laughs> Split was weird as fuck. That's why it, it was, was so good. good yeah. I will have to watch it a incredible. second. I cried. Like, I mean, I for me, the best part was, is that I was it surprised into, like, he didn't. Um, did he movie. even get nominated for? Oh, no, he didn't even get nominated How? for an Oscar. No, no that was my snub. Yeah, that was your that's snub. Stupid. That's what I. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's dumb. that's right. That was fucked up. That was actually really good acting. Yeah, he was incredible. I thought the I thought it was a little bit rushed though. I thought there were some things that were slightly left out and a couple personalities I wanted fleshed out, but whatever. They're making another one, it was don't worry. Probably yeah. one of his best movies. Split two. <laughs> another split. No. Well it's they're tied making... it's tied into Unbreakable, so Unbreakable. they're making like a oh. another the one. Third series in that where it's combining oh, all God. the movies. I really hope this isn't terrible. Do you didn't see Bruce Willis at the end? <laughs> Yeah, I did, but I didn't. I honestly thought they were just fucking with me. Nah, like, that was because that was it's in like the a, same universe. I thought that as was like a Stan Lee moment, like, "Hey guys, we're connected, and it's over." Nah, he said the like, third I movie is going to be called the uh, Glass and Glasses. The guy who was from the, like the main villain, Samuel the, Jackson. Oh, okay. Mm, yep. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, oh, what's that movie? Unbreakable. <laughs> said like four times. Unbreakable. Bro. Oh yeah, that '90s movie. That movie's dope. I love that. So yeah, it's the same universe. But uh, yeah. anyways, uh, science. Mr. Science. Wins. <laughs> <laughs> so where can people find you? Um, you know, if they want to look up your art or your shirts or whatever. Yeah, you can Anything find you me on Instagram. Out. That's going to be mostly where all my promotion is going to come from until my website is launched. Um, still fleshing all that out. Um, but at Casey Leverty, my name is spelled K-A-Y-C-E. And then Liberty. <laughs> so you should follow me. I try to post things that are interesting. So you won't regret it. <laughs> you won't. Get some sock puppet action in there. Yeah, hell yeah. Always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, follow K Celebrity. She's going to be dropping all kinds of cool stuff. Pop a t-shirt or something if she gets the the merch popping. I know your merch is going to be popping out here because you, you got your setup. So everybody keep a lookout. Do it. I would love that. For K Celebrity. That's me. Casey Tynan. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate you coming through. This is a really great, a really uh cool combo. I hope you, you enjoyed yourself Absolutely. and yeah, didn't so feel fun. too crazy. <laughs> no, it's great. Thank you. Awesome. I appreciate well, the opportunity. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for hopping on. <laughs> totally. And maybe we'll get you back after you get, you know, your website and everything set up sometime. Yeah, definitely hit me up. I would love to. You guys are fun. <laughs> Well, that is it for this episode of The Fearless Show. Again, today's date was March 22nd, 2018. <clears throat> I am your host, Dario Hunt. Probably join me with Dries Walker, Shannon Griffiths, our special guest, Casey Tynan. Um, if you have any questions, topics, suggestions, comments about this show, past shows, or any of our future shows, you can leave that down below anywhere this goes up or email us directly at podcast at livinglifefearless.co or go to livinglifefearless.co slash podcast and fill out the form. Um, we will be back shortly with maybe another guest, maybe some more topics. So throw some topics at us and we'll get to you. And uh, thanks for listening as always. And and what, Doris? Keep living life fearless. Yeah. Uh. Peace, y'all. Oh, yeah, this is that fearless vintage, too.